Fireworks is something that you saw from your childhood. And uh, your father has got the distinction of creating quite a lot of records in that particular industry. As an entrepreneur, what did you see growing up as an entrepreneur? Like you started working at the age of 13. What did you see and what did you envisage that you will do in the business of fireworks? Fireworks was in our blood. Actually, that was the main business. We were a corporate family. And uh, I, as a child, used to go to the factory. My mother was an entrepreneur, my dad was an entrepreneur. Both used to be working. We used to be having two shifts of work, morning and night shift. And my mother used to handle the night shift because she had to handle the family in the day. And in the night shift, I would go and I would uh, like to spend a lot of time with her, at least till 12 o'clock. And that's how I started learning the ropes following my father, uh, following my passion of my mother. And uh, I learned the roots of business. Uh, we had a business family. And we are the leading fireworks business family at that time. My father was traveling a lot. He was the head of delegation and fireworks. He was traveling across the globe with the delegation of Shivakasi. And my mother was running the business that time. So as an inspiration, I was uh, wanted to help her. First of all, I was the baby of the family. So I always liked to go where my mother was, and I learned so much. Um, and I used to be very fond of cars and driving and all. And my factory, we had 13 acres in Malad. So that's the time I used to, um, on the sly, I used to go and drive the big tempos in the trucks, because those were used for a delivery those days. So that's the time I got into driving and parking these uh, tempos and uh, trucks for the delivery to load the goods. So when I used to do that, my father uh, and my mother used to say, why don't you load the goods also? <laughs> so I used to take this distribution seed and uh, I used to load this, uh, load the trucks, get it loaded by the people. And uh, that was my job every day and I used to love it. I used to be paid a nice uh, 50 rupees at that time. So that incentive was always day from day one, that you did good work, hard work, that helped me in school buying my powadas. What, what inspired you when you saw your father as an entrepreneur, right from your young age? What inspired you and what is the innovation that you added to your father's business? I think my father was always wanted to be a leader. Um, that's why he was the leader of the uh, Fireworks Association. And he invented the champion bomb. If, I, I don't know if you remember. There yeah, was we, all, we all have spent Morali a lot of money on champion, that. champion, which was, uh, I think, which to, uh, demand was more than the supply. We couldn't manufacture it. The demand was so much. So, as part of delivery, when I used to go, uh, sometimes the driver used to not come. And when I used to go to deliver in the nights, and they used to say, champion, they were champion, they said, champion, I said, champion, go back, get champion. <laughs> Lovely. So, and what is the innovation that you did when you got into the business of fireworks? I think when I got, I was, I had finished my education at that time, and I got in the business of fireworks. And uh, when I came to it, it was uh, crackers with loud volume, less color. It was more of Diwali crackers. And uh, I was in America previous to that doing an internship. So I, since I was in the fireworks business, uh, I did a six month internship with Gruchi Fireworks, They're the largest fireworks company in the country. I got a certificate training. I, I was a trained pyrotechnician and I came back to India. So I took over the business and uh, I came back at that time. There were ups and downs. There were a lot of losses. The company was in quite a lot of debt because the fireworks was banned at that time. So we, they were not allowing any color. So I said, let us do a change. So I got into designing fireworks without sound, only beauty, handling fireworks for stage, like you see, stage pyrotechnics. So we used to design shows for clubs. So in those days, we used to do Bombay Gymkhana, CCI, um, you know, all these clubs we used to go and do this 45 minutes musical fireworks. That is what I got into in my earlier stages. Discovered the Niagara Fall. Uh, we discovered electronic firing, programming fireworks to music. And it just took off. People loved it. In a matter of six years, uh, when I was heading the fireworks, uh, I think um, everybody should love the work we were doing. We were leaders in the line again. We were on top. And that is why, till today, Murani Fireworks has been a household brand. Is the innovation which made you the leader in your line of activity of fireworks? Is this the innovation think, which added yes, value? I think uh, my father was as a passion of always uh, making new things. He was the first person to make the military training bomb in India, uh, where we have military signals. Also the first per uh, person to make the bird scaring device. Normally when the plane lands, uh, there are birds that hit the engine and it used to cost crores of rupees to repair. So he was the first person to invent 
the bird scaring device where the jeep used to be going onto the runway before the landing they used to burst seven eight bombs all electronically fly at bird used to fly away and the plane plane used to land so he's a lot of first so i took after him uh, he always wanted to invent new things and i think uh, i am still doing that till today fantastic in 1989 you went on a tour to london and at that time you saw a open orchestra and you got an idea like for an entrepreneur an idea happens any part of the day or night you saw that and you thought of doing getting into the business of events how did that transition happen from fireworks to events my brother had founded a company called sneog who was uh, pro into uh, producing films we made arjun and he was a very dear arjun was made uh, with sunny deol and my brother grew up with sunny deol so uh, when uh, we had already made a few films uh, we were known in the industry and when i had gone uh, uh, my brother we had gone for a holiday and my brother had taken me along so we had gone to bemli arena where dharmendra was supposed to make an appearance those days stage shows were not about dancing it was an orchestra that played basically and suddenly one satyagun sinha would come say one dialogue and everybody used to say wow clap and he used to walk away then the orchestra used to play singers used to sing and then i had accompanied dharmendra at that time because of sunny deol as a friendship with karim and dharmendra comes on stage and he uh, basically uh, he uh, says some dialogues and people would go mad it was sold out and i was noticing all this and uh, there was a little incident also that took place uh, and that show dharmendra was performing and he did a typical step and he did not see the edge of the stage because light was in his eyes so he fell off so the show had stopped that time and this is something which i remember and then after that i came back to india and i thought you know that it is so unorganized and its people are just loving bollywood over there and i think we should do a show that's when we came back and there were these films released that time were kaamat se kaamat tak there was uh, mr india and uh, it was there was uh, one more film rocky Sanjay Dutt was introduced, Amir Khan was introduced, uh, Anil Kapoor, it was a big hit. So we roped in all these stars to do a one show called Chamakte Sitare. So we only did one show in Wembley on a Saturday night. It was pre-sold in advance with so many stars. Uh, and um, the second show we announced on the day of the show. So that was also pre-sold on Sunday. So it came thumping uh, success and there was no looking back on shows that time. fantastic so events happened around 1989 onwards you got into the events uh fireworks continued because you started using the fireworks in the events that you started conducting yes so you integrated both the businesses together yeah, that I was think, uh, was that intentional or unintentional i think we were already into the uh, business of lighting the fire, uh, skyline of bombay uh, we used to do the national games uh, the anything which was government based uh, we used to also do pyrotechnic and special effect for film industry So in those days, if you pick up any old film today and see the end title, you'll see pyrotechnic special effects by Morani Fireworks. Uh, international films also used to come into India. We were the first choice, like Sea Wolves, Shalimar. They wanted to know because we could not carry fireworks, so they had to use a local company, and we were the first choice. We're the only professional company that did fireworks. So you identified the gap in the market that there is scope for a lot of live events with Bollywood stars. and you filled up that gap by creating cine uh, cine yug entertainment in 1989 exactly when we came back and after the show was successful in london we created our first entertainment company that was the first entertainment company i think entertainment uh, as an event management company did not exist at that time so uh, cine yug entertainment was formed later but we started doing events across the world with a huge star cast 70 to 80 people traveling at that time with dance 40 dancers different costumes lighting technicians and we used to travel to africa china malaysia indonesia us tours were like at one time we used to do july and august so we used to do around 70 international shows 89 onwards 70 cities and wow. it was like friday saturday sunday different city different stage different people different auditoriums so that was major event management so you conceptualized and gave birth to cine yug entertainment now events is a very you there are no retakes in an event when you make a movie the hero does 100 retakes till he is happy the director is happy the crew is happy everybody is happy in events the risk is there are no retakes a mistake has to be a part of the show so okay. how did you do the management of that situation how how could you uh, wouldn't it stress you the event i think i was uh, it is basically very uh, it thank you to team seniok 
meticulous planning. Uh, every event has to be thought about, uh, right from a major checklist has to be made. And everybody is delegated a duty. And everybody has to run by the, because on the day of the show, there is no retake for us. We have to deliver a flawless show in one go. And sometimes it's for television, uh, then, you know, it's even more difficult. So the show has to be fantastic on ground where people have to enjoy it, as well as it has to be shot for television. It's always a challenge. And uh, I think the team uh, working with us works very passionately and everybody works uh, in tandem. There's a stage management team, there's a backstage team, there's security, there is an artist management team. I think uh, working together with passion, determination, focus is... Uh, and of course, every senior person who works for the Pride, they're always very happy that... Uh, Pride is very big in uh, when you have your workers working for you. Uh, if they are not proud to be working for a company, they don't deliver that many results. So I think that factor is there where everybody in Sinayog is like family. They always want to drive to give the best. It's their passion also. Uh, when you conduct an event with so many large multi-star people, these are all successful people who have made it big in life. And definitely when people get successful, their ego becomes larger than their, their own personal image. So how do you do the ego management? How do you handle the egos of so many people working together simultaneously in the same event? Is it difficult or did you undergo some therapy for that? E uh, event management, we, in another word for event management is crisis management. Uh, you know, anything can happen anytime. So you always have to be ready. Um, I don't think any egos uh, are there. I think the stars are the most down to earth uh, people as long as you give them what they want. If you pre-discuss it. <laughs> Can you teach us how to give them what they want? <laughs> if you, you know, pre-discuss it, take their requirements down, deliver it to them, they will not have a third requirement. It is the managers around them who create that havoc. It's not them. So that's, that's been your experience. You're confident to manage any number of stars and any size of a star, right? Exactly. Uh, uh, managers have, I think, uh, last few years, three to four years, uh, we have managers. Earlier, it was a one-to-one -one with a star. We used to talk straight. We used to go, what is the requirement? Our team used to look after them personally, and they used to always be very happy. Now there are more problems. <laughs> What is risk management according to you? Because you're in the business of fireworks, which is again looked at as a very risky business model. It is a lot of element of risk is attached with that. Event management is also a very risky activity. It depends on a lot of permissions, the stars being available, the stars traveling as per the schedule, the acts being performed, the audience being there, the sponsors getting on board. How do you analyze all this and how do you manage that kind of a risk exposed to this business? Uh, the risk exposure management started with my training with fireworks. It is a very risky business anyway. So always, we always were scared this will be burned, the ceiling can be burned, the height would be more, clothes can be burned, fabric can be burned. So we learned on the, you know, it was my first experience with safety. I was doing a show in Wembley Arena in London. And uh, they had said in this rider that we want everything fireproof, we won't allow anything fireproof. So Ashwarya Rai was dancing to a backdrop with this uh, dollar dollar at that time. So I said, let me see, uh, you know, we'll take this fireproof. I went to a fire company and they said, this is fireproof. They printed my backdrop, I took it there. There was an inspection, one and a half hour. We always take two sets. In one and a half hour before the show, the fire, man, fire guy came and he said, everything is fireproof like I told you. I said, yes, sir, you can check it. He said, where is your backdrop? You know, I want to check it, get it down. So the, on the truss, the backdrop came down. He took out his lighter and he tried to burn the corner. And soup, the whole thing caught fire. They got fire in the shed. And I said, sir, he says, you know, I told you everything has to be fireproof. So you learn one thing from me. So nothing can burn. Even a fabric on an artist can burn. So there is a liquid called fire retardant. You spray it. I'll give it to you. So that's when I learned that everything on stage, whenever you do an event, should be fire sprayed with fire retardant. So in case of a fire, it will not catch the body, it will not catch the fabric, it will not catch the floor. So it's, it's expensive, but you need to do something like that when you're doing international shows.